taking it to the schools. Members of the Channel 7 News team at Nailsworth High School. Our Premier, Mr John Bannon, is out and about in his electorate visiting some of our new settlers. And student radio is alive and loud at this year's Royal Show and at the 1988 Pedal Prix. Nailsworth High School News with Paul Zechner and Louise Moore. Jeremy Cordo, Matt Stevens, and SAFM's Jeff Alice shared their professional knowledge of television news recently when they visited Nailsworth High School. They arrived by helicopter to a warm and rousing reception. Then they were taken up to the Media Studies Centre and settled into a lively discussion about television news. While the viewers sit at home, the team started out by showing us a very informative video about how the news is assembled. The program showed us all the different sections of a news story, how they are collected and written, edited, and finally presented. During the question and answer time, they pointed out that if you wanted to get into this type of business, you would have to start at the bottom and work your way up through the ranks. Their advice was very valuable and much appreciated. Questions from students ranged from being very general to very work specific. They admired our studio facilities and teamwork, commenting on how well equipped our Media Studies Centre is. The visit concluded with the presentations of our t-shirts to our guests and a sincere thank you for their time in our school. This is Justin Wanzek for NHS News. And what a fantastic experience that was to have the Seven News team here. Once again, thank you Channel 7. Louise. Yes indeed, thank you Paul. Our Premier, Mr John Bannon, went back to school recently, but this time he was only visiting. Mr Bannon makes a point of keeping in touch with all schools in his electorate, and as our reporter Jeff Henderson discovered, the Premier and the students enjoyed the visit to the special Blair Athol Language Centre. The Language Centre was established as part of the Education Department's New Arrivals Program to assist new students from non-English speaking countries. These young people attend the centre before they are enrolled into the mainstream of our school system. We asked the Premier what was the significance of his visit. I like to keep in touch with uh, what's being taught and meet the children and uh, this of course is a very special school because uh, of its uh, English language uh, studies. Uh, and um, it's a good opportunity to see how new settlers to Australia are uh, fitting in. Did you watch the... The centre uses various methods to help the students learn English. On his visit, the Premier experienced one of them. The students took an immediate liking to Mr Bannon's warm and friendly approach and were obviously sorry to see him leave. We asked the Premier what he thought of this visit. Well, this is different from other visits. Uh, if I go to a high school or even a primary school uh, in, in any area, they tend to be teaching the same sorts of things and uh, their problems are similar and, of course, it's quite easy to sit down and have discussions. Uh, because of the special courses this uh, school teaches, uh, it's, it's very different. Um, you're dealing with children who don't understand English fully yet, they're learning it, and uh, I find that uh, I can probably help them with their learning. Because... Mr Bannon, although very helpful, displayed true political caution when answering questions from us, being careful not to give away too many definites. I see this school as a very good example of the way in which uh, people from lots of different backgrounds, and languages and cultures can work together very happily and very constructively. I think that's what Australia's all about and uh, it's good to see it demonstrated by people newly arrived in the country who in a very short time are working together, they're laughing, they're joking, they're each learning a common language even though their backgrounds are very different. This is Jeff Henderson with the Premier for NHS News. Well it looks as though that visit was a success like the one he made to our school recently. Yes, it did go well. As did our students' involvement at this year's Royal Show. 
The showgrounds came alive as students exercised their live broadcasting skills at the Education Department's Display Centre. During the Royal Show Week, the Education Department, in conjunction with the radio station 5EBI, ran a mobile student radio station. Budding DJs had hands-on experience in radio broadcasting and certainly livened up the Education Department's display area. Nailsworth High School was invited to participate in this area. The station was coordinated by Mr Jim Jackerman, a teacher from Wollonga High School, and the on-air studio was supervised by 5EBI staff. Andrew Trestrail got the show underway. Good morning, everybody. I'm Andrew Trestrail from Nailsworth High School. The Nailsworth representatives were Ashley Scown, Andrew Trestrail, Heather Miles and Paula Howes. Ashley has a song for you now. It's uh, Suddenly by Angry Anderson. Nailsworth wasn't the only school that participated. Banksia Park High, Keith Area School, Vermont High and Wollonga High School were also involved. Students were given the opportunity to participate using the mixing desk, queuing and playing records, cassettes and compact discs. Inside the Education Department's display tent, students were working with livestock, feeding sheep, producing a show newspaper and working on some technical drawing designs. We were told that there will be an ongoing commitment by the Education Department for more students' displays at next year's Royal Show. This is Paula House, 1988 Royal Adelaide Show with NHS News. Well, that looked as if it was a worthwhile experience, Louise. Yes, it certainly did. The 1988 National Pedal Prix took place recently. This year's 24-hour lap race event was held over the first weekend of the last school holidays at the Oaklands Road Safety Centre. Nailsworth High School entered the event with Eliminator 2. Our own Ashley Scown and the Nailsworth Radio Company again joined forces with the 5 EBI mobile radio caravan to provide music and information at the 1988 National Pedal Prix held recently at the Oaklands Road Safety Complex. Hundreds of students from more than 60 schools finally had the chance to race the masterpieces of finely engineered vehicles. Nailsworth Entry, number 47, Eliminator 2, was built by Year 11 students and coordinated by science teacher Mr. Graham Stark. Right, uh, here we are at the open centre for the Nailsworth Entry, or almost entry. We're having trouble qualifying at the moment because uh, a few minor things like mirrors and lights and there's a stress point in the frame that we're trying to weld up just before we enter it. Um, most of the other entries here have had probably a couple of years' experience and know the event. This is our first try, and most people I've spoken to say the first try is is learning, and uh, if you can get going and actually get around the track, you're doing well. Um, we've spent about $400. We just heard that Holden's have spent about 5000 on their entry, so we're a little bit cheaper. And uh, hopefully if we can keep going, then that's, uh, that's not a bad effort. But, uh, some of these guys have been working flat out and we're still going to keep working flat out and see if we can get there. Okay. Last minute changes and modifications on the vehicle's chain mechanism and seating position are always a testing race against time. The first official event was the celebrity race. Many well-known media and sporting personalities, including Channel 7's Max Stevens, freely donated their time and driving expertise, giving the vehicles a chance to show off to the large spectator crowd. The actual lap race began at 3 p.m. on the Saturday, and the winners, vehicle number 25 from Unley High School, crossed the line 24 hours later on Sunday afternoon. Eva Paulson, NHS News. Congratulations to Unley High for their very impressive win and our commiserations to the Nailsworth team. Coming up next, Sports Forum with Jimmy Kiriasis. What a great season of football has been this year, 1988. The Magpies taking the flag and 
uh, up and down season for everyone. I have a talk with a couple of North Adelaide footballers and a league umpire. Today here with me I have Laurie Argent, the league umpire, Andrew Jarman and Jason Rowe from North Adelaide Football Club. Thank you for coming. Well, as you know, this season has been a success for some teams and a total disaster for others. And also, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the trial by video, which rules out unruly play during league matches. Head Commissioner of the SA NFL Tribunal, Mr Brian Martin, has had a rough task finding the guilt or truth of players during matches. Do you believe taping of games will make it easier for Brian Martin or harder on you as being an umpire? I think there's two probably distinct questions here, Jimmy. Um, firstly, it is going to be easier for Brian Martin to assess any uh, tribunal hearing, um, any case, if he has the film evidence. Um, it, there is always some element of doubt when a, when a player puts his case forward and uh, he very seldom pleads guilty and the umpire puts his case forward and there's a variation. So uh, normally the tact is that he would, he would uh, take the umpire's word for it and, and find the player guilty, but there must always be that little element of the doubt unless there is a film available. So whenever there is evidence like that, it's obviously going to help the situation. Um, but the other situation of having a uh, trial by video, my personal views are that uh, you know, if a player is guilty of a, of a major offence uh, and it is shown on video, I think that it should be taken up. I think the, the Carla incident this year was a, probably a classic example of the type of incident that should be brought before the tribunal if it's not seen by an umpire. Uh, if two guys are having a fisticuffs and there's no harm done and the umpires don't see it, I don't think that's justification to bring that particular case up. Yeah, do you believe um, in any way as being a player, do you believe the tribunal should change? Well, I've been up there it's about four times myself, so... <laughs> but I think, like, uh, if I do something wrong and I go up to the tribunal and whatever, Brian Martin uh, sort of gives me whatever, however many games I get, that's what I should get. Like, the ups don't lie, they report you for seeing so something that you've done, so uh, you go up there and cop it sweet. There's, you know, if you get, if you get off, you're, you're probably lucky, and uh, if you get games, you deserve it. So. Have you found, Jason, that the, the um, Mr Martin's tribunal system is better than the three-man tribunal? Yeah, I've been to the three-man tribunal as well, and it's sort of, a big mix up but you got one one sole judge there with Brian Martin and he he knows he's probably seen you before and you've been up before him before so he knows what you like, what you do, uh, if you if you lie to him or whatever so he can work things out just in his own mind so it's it is better. What about you Andrew? Do you believe um, the tribunal should change, or do you believe it's doing well as it is? Andrew? Oh, I think it's uh, it's, a, it's a very good setup. Cause I've been up four times myself, so I can't argue either. I've um, you know I've got I'm a really good mate of Brian Martin now, so um, oh, I think he's doing a good job. Uh, South Australia, and plus he's showing consistency. You know, guys going up with a forearm and elbows, you know, they're getting five and six games, and I think we've got to stamp that out. You know, you give a guy a bit of a whack under the chin and that, and uh, that, that doesn't hurt from time to time. But uh, those serious ones, uh, elbowing and, and lifting the elbow and things like kicking, that you know, he's uh, he's shown consistently that consistency there. So I believe that he's doing a good job, and I think it's uh, I think the VFL might be taken uh, following our steps. I think it's good. Well, I'd like to thank um, Jason Rowe, Andrew Jarman, and Laurie Argent for coming along. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Coming up next, Richard with the weather. The maximum temperature in Adelaide today was 17.6, which was 2.4 degrees below the estimated maximum, occurring at 10 past 1. The minimum was 8.7 at 4.51 this morning. We had temperatures in the state ranging from 29 degrees in Maree to 15 degrees in Mount Gambier. Here are the temperatures of the capital cities in Australia today. The state forecast for tomorrow will be fine and clear at first, with scattered showers developing in the late afternoon. Through the state tomorrow, the temperature range will be from 15 in Mount Gambier to 29 in Wyala. 
The winds will swing from the south to the southeast at a speed of 10 to 15 knots. There will be high tides rising at 5.55 a.m. and low tides approaching at 12.24 p.m. The pollen count is low at 290 and remaining steady. The cloud chart tonight indicates that this band of cloud along the western coast will travel across the metropolitan area, causing some scattered showers about the afternoon. On the other map you can see the high which is going to produce this warm morning. This high will make way for the cold front, so tomorrow a fine morning but becoming unsettled in the afternoon with a top temperature of 23 and an overnight low of 10. Well that's it for our 1988 newscasters program. Our thanks to all the staff and students behind the scenes who helped put it all together. And on behalf of the Nilesworth High School team, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>